Hello, good morning. My name is Charles Omolo and it is 3 o'clock or 3 a.m. here in East Africa. And a friend of mine asked me, why do you wake up those weird hours, you know, early morning to write? And I find early morning free and quiet and, and there's no interruption. But the question is, what motivates me? First of all, of course, is my relationship with God. But above that, you know, there's an experience I went through, and, and that experience, man, I, I try as much as possible. I would not want anybody to go through. So I try as much as possible to update, to inform, to help as many as possible, to avoid the same route. I've uh, been a minister or a pastor since 2000, you know, the 16th when I was first posted to Rwanda, then I went to Ethiopia, and then I came back to Kenya in about eight years later on and with my family. And uh, when I came back to Kenya from Ethiopia, then I was diagnosed with a brain tumor, the pituitary adenoma. And, and, and what happened, you know, it's a moment that was uh, difficult for me. I prayed over it. You know those moments when you pray for a miracle, God, give me a miracle. And as you pray, the miracle is not coming. You know, you want to be healed. I went to a place called Laboratum where it's a prayer center. I would pray. I would go to different, different prayer centers. But eventually that would help me to, sur to surrender. You know, and Jesus said, may this cup be taken away from me. That was a difficult time for him. And for me, that was my moment of prayer, just being, being, being finding it difficult prayed eventually i would be uh, taken to one of the uh, famous hospitals in nairobi i would not want to mention a name just to protect and and uh, one of the best neurosurgeons you know in our country and so we went over i was taken to theater but just uh, briefly before i was wheeled in i think there's a woman who came and there was an emergency pregnancy so it took three hours so i was right there you know next to the theater door in that cloth you know the one you wear and you're feeling cold so those three hours of course they were there you are you don't eat the previous day so i was really cold you know then i was wheeled in injected and and they operated on me for seven good hours and it, it was not successful i didn't know me, I thought everything was well. I see you. I would be taken to the ICU, and and it was quite a bit of traumatic. I almost lost my life in ICU. Then I was taken to HDU, and so HD, I would be given injections to help me to rest and to sleep. My blood pressures were a bit abnormal, but I was okay. Now you know, I was happy, looking forward to having a wonderful life, knowing very well that my brain tumor literally had been successfully removed and so my doctor friend would come and when he came what he would tell me hey you know charles pastor charles you know your skull is so hard i'm not sure of course i had a pituitary adenoma so gigantism is part of that my skull actually is hard so it's okay but i'm really so I telling him thank you so much thank you so much you know for the wonderful job you've done for just uh, making sure that this tumor came out and then he tells me actually i'm here because of that your brain was so hard your skull was so hard that we were not able to remove your tumor that was the moment that i did not i don't know i think even the way he delivered the information was not professional how i wish they would have prepared me by counseling look at this person who's gone through icu moment of near death situation hdu and and and, and then you know icu there was there was a situation in icu in icu the catheter or the gadget for removing the suck, sucking the saliva from my mouth did not work and so saliva filled my lungs and I was nearly choked. I choked nearly to death. Then they would come and rescue me when a doctor was called now almost write my death, death certificate and then she's like, no, this man is not alive, he's not dead. I think he's alive. And eventually, I, w I was hearing all that. Eventually, I came out and I, you know, I became well. They did all they did. So at this moment, when the doctor comes in now, I'm in a general ward. And then he broke the news. Oh, man, all hell broke loose. I was not happy with God. I was not happy with the doctor. And at that particular moment, I started becoming afraid for my life.
You know the stories you hear about doctors wanting to sacrifice the life of somebody, you know, a moment when you hear this is not a Christian hospital, maybe God is punishing me because I came to this kind of an institution, I should have gone to a Christian institution for surgery, and all things that might be making sense for you right now were not making sense. I became so afraid. My blood pressures rose so high. I was injected with several doses of morphine. Nothing could me, put me to sleep. Literally, I was frying my brain. I was frying my brain. I was afraid. And so, at that particular moment, you know, my organs, my heartbeat, my heart rate was so high. I was sweating. Why? Because of the information that was delivered unprofessionally. Well, the question is, how did I get out of it, you know? And, and so I wasn't feeling secure with the place completely. So what happened? My brother, you know, Edwin would come in. And when he came in, what happened? I requested him because I was so insecure. Please stay with me overnight. And what happened is he agreed, he accepted. So he stayed in the hospital with me. And all he did, I asked him, just rub my back. And he rubbed my back, he soothed me. Then I fell asleep. No morphine could put me to sleep. So the moment I fell asleep, when I woke up, I was okay. And I think one of the problems that we're having currently in our society, we say the healing hours are the rest hours, the time that we rest, take a sleep or take a nap. Those are some of the time and moments when our bodies heal. And more and more, as more days go by, we have less and less of that. So I'm forever grateful even for my brother Edwin who stayed there. And many times people will go through this. There may be somebody who's going through this in your relationship, maybe a husband or relative. The best you can give them is a secure, secure foundation. Just be with them. Go to the hospital. Be, be there. So when I write and when I meet people, when I encourage people, I prepare people because this moment, the Bible says in this world you'll have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome. And so what happened, I have equipped myself with so much right now, but I have fought so much to make sure I don't go through the same situation. I know later on I would go to India and the treatment went well and it's very successful, you know. But I take my time every day trying to help as many as possible not to go through the same ordeal that I went through. And that's why I post what I post, hoping that th those who read, those who read might understand clearly that they need to prepare themselves for the battle. We live in a fallen world. The more prepared you are, the better it is for you. And that's what the Bible says. Be sober and alert. Be sober and alert. Your enemy, the devil, is prowling around looking for someone to devour. And there you go. That's why I write articles on a website called Coach Oweedy. And that's where you'll get many of my articles that I've written as well. If you follow the daily devotional that I put there, why I'm zealously desiring for God's people not to go through what I went through. That's why I write early in the morning. God bless you. <clears throat> At Coach Oweedy, early morning. Thank you. Good. Have a blessed day. Thank you.